All right, we'll call to order the Whatcom Transportation Authority Thursday, May 2nd, 2024 Board of Directors meeting. Um, first, I would like to welcome our newest member, Mayor Stewart from Blaine, who is taking over for Eric Davidson. Thank you so much for serving WTA. Thank you very much. And I, I apologize again, Ali, because um, I was trying to give the rest of my council members a chance to be on the board. And unfortunately, while I, it's nice to have a younger group of people on council, they often are very busy. So it fell then on to me and the city manager and I realized that the WTA is absolutely crucial to our development of Blaine. And therefore the two of us wanted to make sure that that we had a good uh, communications with the WTA board. Thank you so much. We're really excited to have you here and the timing worked out just fine. So thank you very much. Um, Vicki, could you do roll call please? Yes, Donovan. We do have a board member Donovan with us. Um, Hawkinson. Here, I'm just learning how to use my little mute <laughs> thing. Thank you. Okay, Hawkinson. Here. Cortice. Here. Lottenbach. Here. Lilliquist. Here. Lund. Here. Sadu. Here. Stewart. Here. And we have Williams absent and Darwin. Present. Thank you. All right. Thank you so much. Um, item, item C is citizen communications. Did we get any communication via email? No. Okay. Thank you. Um, and if there's. Oh, okay. We, we have one citizen here. And I just want to make sure whether he wanted to speak or that. Okay. <laughs> um, and then, yes. Is there anybody in person in the boardroom or online that would like to unmute? and speak to the board. Huh? All right, moving on. Next item, uh, D1, consideration of authorization to dispose of surplus vehicles. This will be an exciting one. Andy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Actually, uh, John Bender, our fleet manager is uh, gonna do this. He's been uh, running that process. So I'll turn it over to, to John. Thank you. Uh, yeah, so this one's pretty standard fare, just recommendation to uh, seek approval for the Board of Directors to declare two 2011 F-350s and one 2013 Chevy Express van as surplus and authorize our general manager to dispose of those vehicles in accordance with the agency guidelines. And there's also a second one for... Just do one at a time. One at a time? Okay. I'll move trying to be expedient. I'll move approval of this uh, disposal of the surplus vehicle. Second. All right, we have a motion in a second. Are there any questions or comments? Discussion? I have a question. I think the Go ahead. Talk about them. Yeah, um, so on these uh, vans, we have the uh, van donation program. Um, so Tim is kindly going to just give a couple words about, uh, about that. Can, can you all hear OK? Okay, good morning. Uh, question was about Van Grant program. Uh, we've had this program in existence for a couple of years now. Um, and the purpose of the program is to uh, release any vehicles that we no longer need, van pool vehicles that we no longer need to the community. Uh, it's been a very popular program growing in popularity. Um, I think we have a waiting list of quite a few uh, social service agencies that uh, want to get a van. Yeah, you have to qualify. You have to be. Uh, yeah, you have to be on like the designated list of being a social service agency, um, provide benefit to the community. And the way it works is that we give the vehicle, give it completely over to the agency. Uh, we track ridership. We're required to track ridership for a year. Um, they do their own insurance. They do their own fuel and driving and stuff like that. We kind of uh, don't don't really have any uh, ownership over it. Um, and then after a year, it's free and clear, and they can do with it whatever they want. Um, so uh, the question is, uh, you know, some of these vehicles that we're releasing may qualify for that program. I think we would have to have a conversation with the fleet to determine how many of those are worth giving up. Some may not be of any value at all, and we may be reluctant to provide those vehicles if, they're, uh, if they need a lot of repairs. Um, so we've, we've got a couple of vehicles now. We have to decide uh, whether we open up the van grant program. 
in which case then we'll um, have an application process and then we'll do some reviews and then release the vehicles to the community. Um, this is the first round. Uh, we will uh, definitely have a second round when we get the additional 12, 12, 12 vehicles, um, I think in August. Um, so we will have a lot more vehicles uh, toward the end of this year to release to the community, we think. So um, yeah, happy to answer any questions. Thank you. All right, Mayor Lund. I just had a question about the year of monitoring. I just wanted to, um, if I understood what you said correctly, once you identify an agency for a donation, um, then they're asked to track ridership. Is that correct? Uh, that is correct. Uh, the purpose for that tracking is because we purchase these vehicles with a state grant and uh, we need to comply with get the public funds requirements. And so, uh, yeah, we're required to kind of continue to monitor their use over that okay. next year. Okay, thank you. All right, any other questions or discussion? Seeing none, all right. Um, so we have a motion and a second. Um, all those in favor, please say aye. 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 And any opposed? All right, looks like it's unanimous. Oh. Item D2, also very exciting. Consideration of authorization to dispose of surplus Gillig bus. <laughs> yep, me again. All right, so this is another one of the same. Seek approval from the board of directors to declare one 2016 40 foot Gillig low floor buses surplus and authorize the general manager to dispose of the vehicle in accordance with agency guidelines. This is a vehicle that was damaged extensively in a uh, collision incident recently, and um, we have been compensated for it from our insurance agency already. I'll move approval. Second. Second. All right, we have a motion and a second. Are there any questions or comments? Todd, go ahead. Yeah, question. Was this damaged in a snow event or a different accident? A different incident. This was an accident out on uh, Hannigan and Pole, right? Uh, yeah, I believe that was the one, yeah. yeah. The gas station. One bit, yeah, we <laughs> went into the gas station. <laughs> Not our fault. <laughs> <laughs> no. Um, so all right, any one question, what, why is the market value that 264 if we've been paid out for it? The market value is like, is it still worth that much money? It is. Uh, yeah, the, 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 whole, the total final payout amount is actually the amount at the very bottom there. Uh, they added the wasted coverage limit to the market payout. Are we going to part that thing out? We are. We actually paid them the co-part scrap value estimate of 39.75 to retain the vehicle and remove scrap value or uh, salvage parts off of it. What are the which, juiciest parts we're going to sell? Uh, we're taking the engine, transmission, radiator, entire AC system, all the body panels, the windows, basically everything usable. It's 2016. We still have a lot of them in the fleet, and we replace a lot of those components pretty regularly. It saves us a lot of money in body repair damage, especially. Uh, makes the repairs a lot faster and easier for us as well. So we're getting, we've already recouped the scrap value estimate that we gave go for wow. our, uh, with it for the vehicle already by usage of parts over the last week or two since they approved us to retain it. Smart, John. John's team down there, there's some really talented people, Sandeep <clears throat> and other body work in, in house, so they will use those. Well done. Thank you. Uh, Satpal. Yes, I, I just had a uh, quick question about the insurance. Did insurance pay out? Because if there's a salvage value, you know, the insurance normally, when they pay something, they take it away since we are selling the parts. I just wanted to know, uh, did we get uh, uh, payout for this bus from the insurance? And uh, did we buy this for the salvage value? What happened? Yes, that's exactly what happened. They gave us a total settlement amount. They deducted the uh, co-part scrap value estimate from that amount when we re uh, requested to retain the vehicle for salvage parts. We're not actually selling any of the parts we remove off of it. We're just using them to repair other buses. Okay. Okay. Thank you. Uh -huh. Thank you. All right. Any other questions or discussion? All right. All in favor, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Excellent, passes unanimously. Thank you so much. Uh, item D3, consideration of approval of April 1st to 15th, 2024 expenditures. Move approval. 
I'll second it. Excellent. Moving right along. Um, any questions about expenditures or comments? All right. All in favor of approving the expenditures, please say aye. 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 Any opposed? Doesn't look like it. All right. Also unanimous. Thank you so much. Um, item E is a board discussion, item E1, I guess, policy discussion schedule, less. Yes, uh, thank you, Ali. Um, so I guess one, can people hear me okay online? Yep. Okay, great. Um, so this is a uh, follow-up from our, our last board meeting. Uh, there were uh, a few board members that really liked the discussion that we had towards the end. Um, and expressed interest in, uh, is there a way to build more of that into the agenda? Um, so wanted to uh, follow up, be respectful of those, those comments and uh, have a discussion about uh, how we can do that. I know Ali's got an idea potentially on, uh, on how we can do that. And um, so the, the intent would be, um, how do uh, we structure into the agendas these policy level uh, discussions, and then also um, like how do how can we as staff to present things that are more uh, that enable more of a policy discussion as opposed to a feel of a uh, staff report. So if we're talking about uh, you know on demand or something, are there can we like tee up questions for discussion as opposed to giving it more as a report? Um, kind of thing and then asking for questions at the end um, to stimulate those things. So um, with that, I'll, I'll pause there and, and see Ali, I'm sorry for putting you on the spot there, boss, but uh, uh, you. <laughs> but That's all right. <laughs> um, <laughs> yeah, so Les and I were having a discussion about this um, and my idea was rather than doing it every meeting and you know, kind of popcorn style, not knowing what people were going to bring up, maybe um, scheduling a policy discussion quarterly where people could um, submit ideas, maybe submit a little bit of information to go with it um, and get it out to the board. So if people wanted to look into that, um, to be prepared for that discussion, uh, that they could do that. Um, and then also so that the staff would have some time to, you know, kind of double check our um, info as it goes out so that we're making sure to give each other good information, I guess. Um, but also, you know, policy can be brought up anytime. I mean, if we have an issue with something, I think emailing less is a great way <laughs> to start that discussion. And if it's something that needs to happen right away, um, you know, if it's something that's uh, more, I don't know, just needs to happen right away, then we can, we can address that. Then we don't have to wait till the quarterly, but um, yeah, I don't know. What does everybody else think about that? So if I understand that one correctly, based on our discussion, we would uh, designate one meeting a quarter as being <clears throat> policy related, uh, not business related. And that uh, then we would work, with the board to, to tee up um, uh, subjects, um, maybe like a month out or something, and then we could get uh, information for backgrounds on those things, um, you know, whether it's read aheads or podcasts or, or those kinds of things to, to help. Um, and then tee it up from a staff perspective uh, with kind of like discussion questions and things of that nature to stimulate. Uh, ideas and we could do panels or you know those kinds of things too so yeah that's kind of what i was thinking but totally up for suggestion todd yeah i, I mean that sounds good um and a, a nice change but i also in addition to that maybe find times where we as a board can just kind of have thirty thousand foot i hate that cliche discussions about you know how our jurisdictions uh, what their visions are for or hopes are for WTA, where it's not just, I mean, where we have more board discussion and maybe less staff presentation. So the, may, may, just throwing that in in the mix with the, with the other idea. Yeah, I think that's a great idea too. Uh, Sat Paul. Yeah, um, I just wanted to share that. I don't know, maybe this caused it or not that myself bringing up the uh, discussion last meeting 
was about because my office got a request for a ballot measure. And I thought that was a timely thing to inform the board. Mm -hmm. uh, it 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 did it does touch on our policy long term and all this and even reach out to the public. But that was my reason because it was uh, uh, something came to my office and I thought everybody should know about it because it's election season. So that's all. Yeah, and I think that Kim had also um, requested that we make some more time for policy discussion. So. I think Jen had a question or had a comment last time too. Oh yeah, that's right. Yeah. Some space into, and, uh, I, yeah, it was very timely. I think, um, I mean, just ex experience at our council is that at the end of every meeting, we go around and allow each council member to kind of share, you know, what's going on in the community or anything they've heard. And, you know, it leads to sometimes productive discussions and sometimes it's just an announcement. But there is time for um, kind of that personal input, with not necessarily related to agenda items, and mm -hmm. it's nice to be able to have kind of that open discussion. So after the meeting, um, after what uh, you know, listening to the discussion arising out of Sat Paul's um, item that he brought up, and and hearing Kim respond to that discussion, that was kind of my comment after the meeting: is is there some space for that? as well yeah. <clears throat> and we do have space for announcements i guess um maybe we've done a poor job of letting people know that that's kind of that same space is we have that at council meetings too but we have um you know just before we adjourn we ask if anybody has announcements or anything to share so what are the, the balance of the, oops, sorry yeah. oh, the balance is we're trying to strike is uh, this is an hour um and so trying to get in the business side of it with with those and um, how do we do it? So that's a balance we're trying to get. So I, I uh, appreciate Ali's thought of dedicating something that's scheduled, um, it, you know, notwithstanding that there could be things come up in between, but uh, the way to balance that. Ali, my hand is up. <laughs> Go ahead. Thank you. Um, I appreciate the idea of setting aside policy discussions, especially if, if there's like a call a month ahead to, hey, what are some topics? I think some policy discussions will naturally come up during business. Um, I just wrote, wrote down four policy discussions that aren't related to any particular action. For example, uh, talk about land use and comp plan. Uh, all the cities and the counties is undergoing the comp plan cycle. I think it'd be nice to have a big high level discussion uh, with WTA on that. Um, Microtransit, I think, is a good policy discussion. We're doing some work on that. The union shared a, a, a white paper with us recently. I think that's worth a discussion. I still want to talk and understand more about uh, regional and national plans for hydrogen infrastructure because our fleet transition plans depends, I think, entirely upon figuring out the infrastructure question. And again, that's not action specific yet. And also, as already mentioned, what is the economic value of public transit? I don't mean what do our books look like, but um, what value do we have in terms of facilitating everyone else in their life, getting to work, school, shopping, <coughs> everything else? Again, that's not action specific. And I'd like to have that discussion. So I've already got four teed up for the first quarter. <laughs> <laughs> Michael's got that's the first year covered. <laughs> <laughs> that's excellent um yeah anybody else have any opinions or thoughts well, yeah i got one one additional one because i was going to bring it up in our announcements but i'll do it now because michael's piling on <laughs> um peace health opened in linden in mid-april uh in a new facility and um i know the linden bus is giving up um 7th street 17th street pine street double ditch loop and about the same time would be adding a loop going down Homestead, going to Peace Health and out again. And I talked less about it, but I guess I want that on our, our radar is another stop for Linden is to have the bus stop at the new Peace Health facility because uh, there are citizens that could use that stop. So Makes sense. And if we're looking for ideas for discussion, I'd like to... Micro, uh, another idea related to microtransit is what transit looks like in rural communities. Um, it's not necessarily fixed route buses, 
uh, but it might look different, but still provide value and um, community connection. I second that one for sure. <laughs> Thank you, Jen. Anyone else? Okay. So are we just looking for head nods here that we like the quarterly idea? Yes, if, if this is a, a consensus, we'll move forward with uh, with doing that. Ali, we'll check with you on the other getting one scheduled for next quarter and uh, and then topics and we'll learn as we go. Great. And um, yeah, I appreciate people speaking up about that. And uh, I think it'll be a good addition. So thank you very much. Uh, thank you. All right. Item F reports to the board F1. Mission Statement Update, Partnerships. Maureen. All right, good morning. If only I had known I would have a full half an hour, I would have <laughs> come up with a longer list. Um, today I'm speaking on the fourth bullet, which is partnering with our community to improve transportation systems, and I only have four items. Uh, the first one, watch your mailbox on Monday. You will receive an invitation for another ribbon cutting. This one um, is to celebrate our partnership with Lummi Nation. They were the second recipient in our Transit Access Fund uh, program. And we will be out there on May 24th celebrating the improvements to transit stops and bicycle facilities at the Lummi uh, Counseling Center and the Lummi Nation administration, administration offices. Uh, so that's one exciting uh, aspect of partnership. Another is with Whatcom Smart Trips. We and Whatcom Smart Trips were again in classrooms of all seventh graders uh, at participating schools in Whatcom County. So that's well over a thousand kids who learned how to plan a trip, as well as how to ride, how to respect the ride, and um, uh, how to travel independently. Uh, a handful of you, our board members, joined us at a event that we co-hosted in January with the Whatcom Housing Alliance, and that was the Transportation and Housing Forum, which was a great chance for people to hear from a presenter and also talk with each other about the intersection of housing and transit. And finally, this Sunday at 2 p.m. is the May Bike Parade. Um, this is fun with a purpose, and the purpose is one, to help people, uh, uh, adults and children and families recognize that transportation uh, is, that, that riding your bike downtown can be good for transportation as well as very enjoyable and safe. It's also a great way to showcase the incredible uh, bicycle facilities that we now have down Holly Street as of yesterday, and also uh, down near Trackside and Waypoint <clears throat> Park, which is where it ends. Tr truly wonderful bicycle infrastructure. I wish we had it all over town, and maybe someday we will. Um, what time is that right on 2 p.m., and they start at the Wiku on Holly, correct? Jersey, Jersey, Jersey Street, a little different this year. A two leave at 2.30, okay. Um, and just final note about the bike parade, clothing is not optional. <laughs> 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 so I got. Right, thank you, Maureen. Exactly. That's right. <laughs> it's not our first. <laughs> <laughs> uh, do you want to talk about events? Um, sure. We will have a host of events this uh, event season, as we always do. Um, the ones I can think of off the top of my head are the Safe Kids Safety Fair, Kids Fest. Um, the stir, uh, you know, I forget the name, uh, burned ale by a block party. Um, the school district has a block party. There are others, and I don't remember them all. Sorry. Quite all right. <laughs> a, uh, Genevieve's in charge. She yeah, would be able to rattle them off like you uh, wouldn't believe it. Uh, uh, as we approach summer, when all these things happen, maybe next week we can talk a little bit sure. about those. Yeah. Sure. Uh, in, in addition to those internally, um, we've got. Uh, the safety breakfast next Tuesday. Um, oh, those events. Start at, well, just yes. in addition. Yeah, very good. In addition to going to test for a lot of events. Um, and then on the 19th of May, we have the rodeo. Um, I think it's 19th of May, right? It is 19th yeah. of May, yeah. Um, I think so something like that. Was it clear? Yeah, I was like, oh, maybe I have the wrong date. And then uh, June 2nd, uh, which is a Sunday, uh, WTA at the Bells Day. Um, so, Tickets for, for that, let us know if you're interested. And uh, it's uh, like a 125 first pitch. Uh, 
So, and as Genevieve passed along, it's two dollars. And last year, Dan owned the first pitch. And Vicky sang the national anthem. Yeah, good times. All right. I really appreciate all the work that's being done to meet people where they're at. I think that that's super important and I know it's a lot of work. So thank you so much for that. Um, is, Vicky a, gonna, is Vicky gonna sing the national anthem this year? That's what we really wanna know. <laughs> we actually have a transit operator who's gonna take the role this time. Former opera singer, classically trained, hasn't uh, sang publicly since 1989. <laughs> so you get on her bus and you hear her singing. <laughs> yeah. If I could just underscore, uh, since we have a little bit of time, what, what Ali uh, said about meeting people where they are and how uh, these events really do help um, with ridership and getting people to know how to ride the bus, that it's, it's there. Um, it's uh, amazing when you, you go to these things, just simple things that you may not think about, like, how do I pay a fare? Um, Eric, Eric likes to say that uh, the hardest part is getting, getting somebody on the bus the first time. Um, and once you do that, it happens. And so these are kind of non-threatening ways because uh, you're not waiting at a bus stop and wondering, <laughs> am I holding people up and, uh, and things? So it's a nice way to do that. And it's, it's also a nice way uh, for them to understand that they have an ally in our operator to, uh, to help them figure out, um, you know, how do I pull the cord to indicate I want to get off <laughs> the bus? Things of that nature. So, so it's, it means a lot to do these do these things and appreciate the ideas that board members have to push this. Great, thanks everybody. Uh, item F two, general manager's report. Uh, yes, covered events. So that's good. Sorry for <laughs> doing that to you. Um, Couple uh, other things I uh, would really like to highlight the WTA ATU partnership on a uh, pilot program for shift sharing. I think that's a, a great way of um, trying to have uh, trying trying it out with having uh, two operators share a shift. So they're for those that may want to have part time work um, because of life schedules and things or where they're at. Um, trying that to see if that works, and uh, uh, I just really appreciate the partnership that went into into that and willingness to try new things um, on that. So that's good. Uh, let's see, we just came off um, a week of all employee forums, um, which I, I think were really good. Staff had a lot of great suggestions on uh, ways to make us better. Um, as you know, we have a uh, get real, get better approach. And the only way you can get better is having uh, real discussions. And uh, uh, it's it's was really great. I, I really appreciated uh, everybody's time um, and the thinking. It's obvious that we have a, a real group of folks that are really thinking a lot about how to make WTA a better place, um, both internally and externally as uh, as well. So a lot of good ideas for us to uh, to filter through and triage on what, what we can do, what we uh, can do in a longer term, and uh, what are those things that may take even longer. <laughs> to do. So, uh, so that was really good. Appreciate everybody's participation in that. Um, we uh, have today the interviews on the Linden station um, to find a partnership. So we're still still tracking for May 16th uh, to bring the board a, a recommendation. Uh, so that's still tracking along well. And then last thing is uh, we in partnership uh, with the uh, Opportunity Council um, supporting their uh, homeless veterans outreach event, um, which is, I can't believe tomorrow's the 3rd of May already, but it's tomorrow. Um, that's Friday. That's, oh tomorrow. gosh. <laughs> so you're the thank you. Check it down there. <laughs> thank you yeah. for highlighting that. Sorry. Here for you, boss. <laughs> uh, so we'll be. Uh, um, Offering the uh, free rides for vets tomorrow, um, and in support of this uh, event, it's out at the American Legion, and Opportunity Council is providing homeless uh, service to or vet uh, service to homeless vets um, to help them, you know, get IDs, access services, and, and those kinds of things. So, um, yet another partnership. Uh, appreciate it. so. Uh, any questions? I've rambled on about as long as I can. And, uh, <laughs> So I'll pause there. All right. Anything from anybody? 
for less. All right. Thank you so much. Anything else from you, Les? No, ma'am. All right. Item G, any other business? Oh, Satpal. Yes. Well, I just wanted to share with you, you probably have read all the newspaper articles and everything in last week. It's been a pretty hard week for me to have these conversations with my friends and, and my family. And uh, uh, this is part of the public service. Uh, uh, I do make hundreds of decisions every week. Uh, and uh, I miss something and I take my full responsibility for that. And I have uh, apologized to the council and especially to all the employees who, who got impacted with this. I think uh, uh, something to learn from my mistake. And uh, I welcome that uh, council has decided to uh, look into this matter more keenly. I think I just want to everybody to know uh, there was, uh, I was not doing Nixon's job that I was purposely covering up everything, but that's how it got portrayed that I had a ulterior motive and intentional motive to cover up so that it doesn't get out. Uh, it never was. Uh, and uh, and uh, I own up my mistake. I just want everybody to, I want to assure everybody that, uh, that uh, my integrity uh, is, is still the same, what I have displayed last 10 years being in public service. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thanks, Sat Paul. All right, uh, any other, other business? Okay, how about announcements? Does anybody have announcements? <laughs> All right. I'm always the one to speak up at my council meetings too. So. Um, just, uh, sharing that I had yet again, another person, um, at my center, Ada Voskulin, who is like a grandmother to everyone in Linden, expressed her disappointment in the ending of the Linden hop. And, and we talked it through, um, but again, just that sense of loss in Linden for that service and, um, is, uh, how, how do we, um, as a board, as WTA, as an organization, um, kind of meet people where they're at and explain um, alternates for them at this point, um, and and that it's um, something we're still looking at and working on. So that would be my comment. Thank you. All right. Any other announcements? Going once, just kidding. <laughs> All right, then we are adjourned. Thank you, everyone. See you next time.